This video is going to be a step-by-step -step process on populating the DMS board for uh, the Jehu's uh, DIY PCB base power wall project, right? So this is what the board looks like. This is the top, this is the bottom. I have been selling these like this. This is the kit, right? And it's got all the hardware that it takes minus the actual BMS units, right? But moving forward, I am going to offer the kit like this, which includes everything, including the, uh, the BMS units here. So this is what you will get. Let's open it up, lay it all out. There we go. Here are three BMS units. Here. All the hardware, including the... Uh, I think in the future I am going to source out these so that they already come attached as a pigtail. I think that's what it's called. To the XT90. And I will do some tests to see if maybe an XT60 is enough. But for right now we're doing XT90s. Uh, on this one we will have to solder these ourselves which is a lot of work and you need a lot of heat to solder these so that's why i am gonna just buy them the pigtails so that they come already pre thin so you just yeah it's just you know less work and much easier all right that is what you get with the whole kit uh now let's put it together all right first thing you're gonna need is gonna be double-sided tape sort of like this one it could be any but this spongy one works great. Uh, this is going to be to put the BMS units to the board there. So you just put a little, stick it in there. Then you peel it off. Next, you will have to install the BMS boards, right? These, these You have to face them where the connectors are. And there are two facing this way. You center them in that little uh, white thing there. And then this one is the opposite direction. There we go. There we go. Right? They don't have to be perfect. They just have to be in the white thing there. Next, we do these little guys. Those are going to be there to connect the BMS. I put your soldering iron to the hottest setting because you're gonna need a lot of heat for this step here. And what you do is you just solder these guys there. And there we go. If this is sticking out too much on the bottom, make sure you take it off. And in fact, you might need to cut one leg shorter than the other one. It's probably they look like this they probably will work better uh much better you see that see how that lays there there we go cut the part on the bottom right trim those off there we go the high the high power connections are done all right next we move on to the 16 pin connector uh, we start on the p plus side uh, we flip it over right yeah the connector needs to start on that line that says non bad go right there we go Flip it the other way. Alrighty. Here we go. Next, let's do the uh, fuse holders. So you load it up like this. Then you let them sit there. Right. There we go. They're poking through. You can feel them poking through. Now you gotta make sure these are well soldered in here because these are gonna be carrying all the current. About 50 amps here. 
All right, there we go. Those are the fuses. Next, usually these guys get the M4 mounting uh, plates here. Load those up like that, then you flip it over. There we go. Should look like this at this point. Next is gonna be all the little connectors. The small eight pin connectors. All right, these don't have to be too long because they just go right there. So what you will have to do is you have to cut them. I'd say about a quarter inch from there, or what would that be? It's about 10 millimeters, maybe about 10, eight millimeters. Uh, away past the board. I'd say that works good. All right, make sure you cut all these same distance. There we go. Clean your area. Uh, you have to use one that's smaller than this, like a 22, you know, a 24 probably, or a 26 is gonna work really great. I have only 22 here and it doesn't work that great. So you just have to, yeah, basically that. Make sure that they're all like that. All right. All right, once you have all of these stripped like that, uh, I what it helps I found that it helps us to bend these guys sort of like this. So they're kind of facing down, right? This other one too. There we go. So they have a nice little round little thing there. Okay, and then here comes the hard part. Uh, I use tweezers, they kind of, it kind of makes it a little bit easier, but then you have to guide each cable into the little hole here. All right, there we go. Bam, that's one. There we go, that's another one. Then that's another one. Make sure there's no like loose strands coming out because that's a good way to to short out these, right? If there's like a loose uh, strand there and it goes on the neighboring one, that's that's yeah, that's gonna be a short. So there you go. Look at that. You see that? So then they're all sticking out in the back over there. So then you gotta make sure this doesn't stay there too long and melt the cables because those are not high temperature uh, rated sheeting on that cable, right? So there we go. All right. And there we go. You might want to get that one and make sure that it's not flying around. You wiggle it back and forth, then you, you, I just broke it, right? So then, yeah, there we go. Is this, can you guys see anything in there? I don't see anything else in there. It looks pretty clean. All right, and we got to do that to the other two. I'll cut this one's two. A couple of these are too long. There we go. All right, now it's time to solder the uh, connector here to the cables. All right, let's wait a little bit until it cools. All right, time to shrink to these guys. Oh man, come on. Here we go, there we go. Then this other one.
use a uh, heat gun. Right, next. So next we put the negative on the negative and the positive on the positive. There we go. I think that's it. So all we have to do now is to cut those, right? They're sticking out too much. There's no need for that. There we go. There we go. All right, the final thing to do on this one is to install the uh, fuses. This one's I also went 35 amps, even though here they say maximum of 30, but they're just run too hot when we're running this like around 50 amps. I, I recommend uh, you run these at, uh, you know, 50 amp continuous maximum, right? Like you can run more on here, 60 amps, but peaks for short periods of time for continuous, I'd say no more than 50 amps. Uh, so there we go. Uh, you have extra parts in here that came in the kit, but those will be used to whatever, you know, your load. That's how you do it. And then these are gonna be used to connect to the other boards. And of course, these are gonna come from the other boards also to connect the balance leads in here. Um, Depending on what you're gonna be doing, you might use screws, you know, or nuts. So that's why they're including the kit, just for some flexibility. In the next video, I'll show you how to install this on a stack of batteries. And uh, yeah, and then how to test each one of these to make sure that they're working. But that's for the next video. Thank you for watching this one. I hope this help you put these uh, BMS board together uh, and assemble it in a way that is helpful to you. See you guys in the next video. All right. Bye.